guys, welcome back to the channel for another cook. This is one of my all time favorite burgers, a rodeo burger. I remember when I first got into barbecue, I made one of these, that must have been back in 2015-ish. And I haven't done one since, and I don't really know why. Possibly because a rodeo burger has onion rings in it. So we're gonna make beer battered onion rings and there's a little bit of a process to it, so it's not the handiest thing to do but give it a go uh, because they are phenomenal on a burger. So I have the stuff around me. We're gonna do the onion rings first, then we're gonna get onto the smash burgers and what we're gonna do with them. To kick things off then, we have a large onion. Try and get as big an onion as possible. We'll grab a knife. We'll go ahead and take the end off it. We need to cut these into our rings. So we want them into large rings. I think the bigger the better when it comes to onion rings. You can make smaller ones, uh, but it's just twice the effort for half the pleasure. So we'll go ahead and get this peeled. Okay, and once we're peeled down, we're gonna go into rings. We're talking one and a half centimeters thick each. So there, out of a large onion, we're kind of getting into three good sized slices. That might not sound like a lot, but these are only for a burger, plus a few Scooby snacks on the side. So next, we can go ahead and start to tease the rings out. Try not to break them. You'll probably find once you pop your onions out, on an onion of this size, you'll get a good few rings on the outside uh, once you pop them out. But once you get towards the center, they do this. So they start to split into little modules. You can still pop these out and turn them into onion rings like so i've ripped it now but but that air makes my skin crawl we're making onion rings and if they weren't round that would uh put my head away so what i do with these is i just chop them up keep them in an airtight container and then use them in sandwiches or whatever else i'm cooking so we're just looking for these whole rings at the minute so we'll go ahead and pop the rest of these out and see what we are left with so that's given us about a dozen onion rings out of that one onion, uh, plus a little bit spare for other cooking. You can take those, once they're split into their individual rings, and drop them into some milk, just to keep them while you get everything else ready. Just toss them around in there to make sure they're covered, or coat it in it, because that's what's gonna help our batter stick later on once we flour them. Don't be too violent though, you don't want to break them. Broken onion rings are no longer rings, they're onion strands. So I'll get rid of this and then we're going to talk through the production line that is going to go to get these into the oil and cooking. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a production line going here. In this bowl, we have our onion rings that are already cut up and uh, they're soaking in a little bit of milk. In this bowl then we have plain flour, uh, so we're gonna come out of the milk into the flour just to get them dusting in it, and that's just gonna help the batter stick to it. Uh, then over here we have our batter, which we've already made up. So this is plain flour, baking powder, a little bit of corn flour. There's a few spices in there as well, which is giving it its color. So we have paprika, uh, turmeric, uh, cayenne pepper, and a little bit of salt. Then that is all diluted down with beer. Uh, so around 150, 160 mils of beer. You want it a relatively thick consistency to help it stick to the uh, onion rings whenever you dip them in there, otherwise it'll just run off and you'll end up with a very thin batter and the onion will shine through quite a lot. So I like to do a slightly thicker batter to make sure it sticks in there. So that is the third process. After that, they go straight into the oil. So I have the Kamado Joe set up. Uh, there's a good fire lit in below it. The temperature's sitting around 200 degrees and I have some oil in there. Uh, roughly two, three inches of oil in the bottom of a pan is enough to do these. Uh, so we'll run through how to get one done and get it into the oil cooking. So let's quickly run through how to get one of these done. We will take an onion ring out of the milk dab it into the flour and go in with a dry hand and just give it a dusting. Toss it around a little bit, make sure it's well coated. And just tap off the excess and into your batter. 
and once it's in our batter then we go in with our wet hand again and just dip it down in there to make sure it's completely covered and that's what we're looking for nicely coat it all around just let any excess run off then we're going to go over to the barbecue if we take a quick temperature reading, our oil should be sitting somewhere between 180 and 190 degrees. Uh, that's when we're ready to cook. It will drop in temperature slightly, so you're better to aim sort of in that slightly higher level uh, before uh, putting anything into it, because as soon as anything goes in, it will drop in temp. Okay, and we'll take our battered onion ring, just slowly lower it down in with a fork. Now it's important to say, Oil and fire do not mix very well, so do not use a saucepan that you have to fill almost to the top, because if that bubbles over, you're in trouble. Uh, you want one that you can leave plenty of a gap at the top that you're not gonna end up um, the oil spilling over the edge. And just keep an eye on it for a few minutes. The bubbling will start to subside whenever you know they're almost ready. Uh, keep flipping them over as well, as you can see. Uh, they aren't completely submerged in the oil, so every maybe couple of minutes go in and turn them over uh, just to make sure they're browned evenly on each side. And after maybe four minutes, they should be nice and golden brown. Still coat it all over, they've puffed up a little bit. That's what you're aiming for. So get that off onto a wire rack to cool down uh, while you go on with the rest of them. Uh, while they're cooking, you can go ahead and prepare the rest of them. You don't have to uh, stand and watch them. They're perfectly happy in there on their own. So we'll get the rest of these done. Uh, I'll show you a few clips of me putting them together. Uh, then we're gonna come back and start talking burgers. Okay, our beer battered onion rings are done. As always, when I work with flour, I get covered in it. Um, Eagle Eye viewers may notice that there's one missing. I, I ate it. You can't have them sitting on a rack beside you for too long before you dive in and try one. I'll tell you what, I'm going to try another one. Because they just taste so good. Super crispy, nice and soft inside. Mm. I'm a happy man. And you might be saying, this is a lot of onion rings put inside a burger. By the time we come to building the burgers, there will barely be enough to go into them, I promise you. They're just so good. But, we must crack on. Okay, in here I have about a pound of ground chuck. Um, Nothing else in it, that's all it is. We're just gonna season it up a little bit and then make it into the balls to make our smash burgers. So I'm gonna add roughly about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more of the Montreal steak seasoning from Angus Noink. Uh, definitely my favorite one to put into burgers. And just get in with our hands, give that all a mix around to make sure the seasonings are well spread through. Like good burgers require nothing else but uh, good meat and a little bit of seasoning. Don't have to go in there with eggs and binders and breadcrumbs and all sorts. We're not making meatballs, we're making burgers. Okay, once you have your seasonings mixed through, I'm gonna form that into balls. Divide it into four. If you're doing quarter pounders, I'm going to a little less because I need an extra one today. The idea is once we smash these out, we want a nice thin burger, then we're gonna double them up inside our burgers. Extra ones for one of the kids. Okay, that's it ready, nothing else to it. So we'll move over to the KJ, uh, I'll show you the setup, and we're gonna get a few of these smashed on, cheese melted onto them, into a toasted bun, <sighs> onion rings on top. It's gonna be phenomenal. Okay, we're just gonna place one of our balls on, take our spatula, press down. Flatten that out as much as you can. On the back side here with another one. I'm 
after a few seconds then flip them over An awesome crust building up on the outside of that one that's what you're looking for with smash burgers as soon as you flip then you can go on with your cheese let that melt down over let's get the rest of these on Right, we're all done. I'm looking forward to these. I've had two onion rings since, but saved a few of the best ones for the main show. There's everything I love about a burger in this burger. Nice thin patties, cooked really quick. Cheese, plastic burger cheese, remember? Crispy onion rings, barbecue sauce. Let's dive in and grab some. Mm. This most definitely isn't an Instagram burger. Kind of hard to make it look good. Kind of hard to eat it in a nice looking way. But it tastes phenomenal. The cast iron has given an incredible crust to those burgers. Seasoning still coming through on it. Onion rings are just out of this world. I have one, two, three, I have four left. They will not last very long after this video, I can promise you. All right, so I'll leave a recipe link below in the description. Just to talk you through what goes into the actual onion rings themselves and the burger mix. Although it's kind of hard to call it a burger mix when it's literally mince and seasonings. But everything will be in that description that you need to make these. Uh, hopefully you can make them look a little bit prettier than I can but at the end of the day, it's what they taste like. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Gonna demolish these.